Hi everyone, and welcome to this workflow video for managing large-scale meshes inside of Revit. The starting point for today's video is that I have a classified mesh model linked into Revit via the point views for Revit plugin. So when looking to add mesh data into your Revit project, it's important to think about how best to manage this import and where that data is going to end up. Without proper thought and management, you could end up bogging down your Revit project with tons of information, making it slow to open and pretty much impossible to navigate effectively. So the first thing to check is it's important not to add too much data into the project. This is the first thing you should make sure of is that you aren't going to be adding thousands of objects into the Revit file. The number of objects is indicated in the element count field in the coordination model window. If we look at the two models I have loaded, for example, uh, the first one has been classified into layers, so I can easily switch these on and off of the coordination model, but the structural layer actually has about 400,000 objects within it, which is going to be way too many to actually load into this project. So as a general rule, you really don't want to be adding more than a couple of hundred objects per layer. So if the element count is too high, then you, what you need to do is go back to your point fuse project and look at merging and optimizing those layers together before exporting. I'll stick a link to another video that walks you through that process here. So for today's video, we're going to be using the second linked file, which has been classified into objects. As you can see, the element count for the layers are all very low. The best next step is to use work sets to manage where the data is stored within the project structure. To do this, before adding any mesh into the project, head to the collaborate tab and launch the work set function. Press OK to create a default work set and launch the work set window. In here, you now want to create one or a number of different work sets that corresponds to how you have decided to manage your mesh data. In our case, I'm going to add two, one for MEP and one for structural, but you could use this to import areas, regions, levels, or, or any, anything else um, that's gonna help you manage this data. So once happy, press OK to confirm the work sets and then make one of these the active work set. So in our case, I'm going to use MEP. If you then head to the Point Fuse plugin, press the Add to Document button and then toggle the layers that you actually want to import, making sure that they're relevant to the work set that you set active. Again, in our case, MEP. Uh, just double check the Revit categories and then press OK. Once the import is completed, you will see that the imported data is already tagged as belonging to the active work set. You can also change the work set from here if you've accidentally added something to the wrong one. You can now repeat this for the other work sets that were created. Now that's done, you can toggle the visibility of the mesh data using the work set management tools. Once happy, press save to confirm the changes and then close the project and return to the Revit home screen. From here, press open and navigate to the project you just created. In the pop-up dialog, tap the drop down next to open and choose specify. This will launch a window that will allow you to define exactly which work sets to load when the project is launched. Keeping the work sets containing mesh off at startup will will help to prevent any lag or sluggishness while the file is being opened. Work sets can then be loaded as and when they are required once the project is launched. This same function also exists if using a cloud hosted Revit model hosted on Autodesk Construction Cloud. In this case, tap on the three dots to the right hand side of the Revit project and again choose specify. An alternative method would be to create separate Revit files based on the same criteria and then link them together. This is a similar approach to combining together different models from multiple subcontractors or trades working on the same project. So first, launch a new Revit project for one of the sets of data. So in my case, I've already pre-prepared a project called MEP. And into this project, I'm going to add all of the MEP mesh using the add to document function in the Revit plugin. I'll then open, I'll then open a second project with the same shared coordinates and add the structural data in in the same way. And I've got a pre-prepared project that's called structure in which to add this to. Again, I'll press save, close that. And then finally, I've just created a simple central model, again, in the same coordinate system. 
All I now need to do is add each of the Revit files as linked models into this central Revit project. And so now all the data is there as linked models that can easily be turned on and off by uh, anyone that needs to access them. So here we go, a couple of, uh, of in-depth looks at the different ways that you can manage this mesh data. It's a good solution for limiting the amount of manual modeling to do. Uh, with the right management, it can also be a very effective solution to time consuming and expensive modeling. So thank you for watching and I will speak to you next time.